usual. Then wait till the man then tell her he good, as usual. Then the Creole then show up that the week. Drink up the rum, the coffee, and eat all the people to the cake. And you could know and could count the amount of congeal we raised at the funeral, as usual. Creole still go on like choir being a ballad, as usual. I mean, they still got politicians to take with a fool, as usual. You got a party, and people where you know them invite still come, as usual. And they get back, sir, you when the um, rice and beans and the rum done, as usual. And at your party, and you know me had no fun, as usual. Well, me tired of the usual, that's why they do the as usual, as usual. Grandmaster says so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come over the side as usual. <laughs> I would love to say we have Grandmaster opening for us as usual. Well. <laughs> but that was a great way to start the morning. Thank you for being here. You are a part of the Team 501 <laughs> Spoken Word. And they are here to talk about the celebration of your fifth anniversary as well as the launch of uh, the first of a series of books. We have with us on set Sean Taker, who is a poet. We have Keo the, the Assassin, uh, who is also a poet and Grandmaster on the end. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, morning, morning. morning, 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 morning. Yeah, having us. Us. Yeah, yeah, when I got, the, when I got the, the, not, the notification saying that, you know, these guys will be on the set this morning, I was like, what? This that we like to become our fun Friday. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we always look forward to, Grandmaster, uh, the assassin, and of course yourself. I, you know, I, I didn't even know. Yes. But let's get to 501 well. compilation series. We know that we've got a lot of poets within this country. Mm -hmm. And you guys uh, turn, turn it around now and making a 501 compilation. What is that like for you? Where did the idea come from? Yes, it, spoken word, 501 is a poetry night that was created by Margaret Reynolds. Mm -hmm who is a poet, and we have it on the, uh, twice monthly, and we've been having it for five years. It's, she really created it as a space mm -hmm. for poets to come and share their voices and share their vision, share their writing, and all poets are welcome to that space. Mm -hmm. We started first at BBQs on North Front Street, where a man named Mark Swift lent us his yeah, space, and then it was Brick Oven on mm -hmm. King Street, where Stanley Moody lent us his space, and now we're housed at the Artist Development Center, run by James Sanker, and they've really lent us spaces where we can share our voices and share our visions. And the poets just decided mm -hmm. to publish a book, which, is, which we call To the Writers of the World. It's our first anthology, and it was put together beautifully by Mark Reynolds, who did the layout and did the design via mm -hmm. our company, Reynolds Desktop Publishing, assisted by Kieran Gabriel, who's really a, a sustaining voice and a sustaining force of Spoken Word 501, yeah. pushing the different creative avenues we try to pursue. And he and Hannah Fatouz put together the, the glossary of the book, standardizing all the Creole words in the book. There's an introduction by writer and UB le literature lecturer, Obalde Mergera, mm. the foreword by Margaret Reynolds, mm -hmm. and the afterword by Kiran mm. as well. And these voices are really voices of freedom. It's a kaleidoscope of voices in his book. Poems speaking of life, relationships, God, love, violence, politics, a whole spectrum of what life is. I, and I, I think what poetry is ultimately the deep song of the soul and the, the, the music within us, the light that illuminates life. Wow, I know, right? that's, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the last I think you all, but you know yeah. what? It, it, I, I think you speak with such passion about the opportunity to be able to share what you have been able to create. Yeah. Keo, you've been behind uh, this movement, um, and I know there's a team of you that mm -hmm. have been working for five years. You've been uh, presenting in different places, as, as mm -hmm. Sean pointed out, but also trying to get uh, more people on board and more people aware of using spoken word as a voice to the public. Tell me, what does it feel like now to, to reach this anniversary and this milestone of your publication? Well, it's like, uh, it's a surreal moment because it started off as a concept and at the time we were doing our stuff with Youth Voices mm -hmm. and 
Uh, when we joined, when we joined 501, it was around the same time that you voice was kind of waning, so we were kind of like looking for a home in a sense. And spoken word 501 became that home and place for everyone. So afterwards, it's like different people started added on over the years, and then we just went from a small group of us because it started off at BBQs like about 10 of us, and then it blossomed into about a team of 20, 30, and we have people from all over the country country that comes to Spoken Word 501 because it's not only limited to Belize City mm -hmm. but we have poets from Danriga, we have poets from up north, we have poets like everyone that we have an encounter with we, um, joins the family and we just want to use this book as a way to present it and as a way to document things because it was really inspired by the passing of our fellow poet um, Dale Blind Stillett. He was at our spoken word episode the night that he was um, he was gone down. So we had three we had two poets that passed away um, um, over the last two three years, and we said we need to have a way that we could document our stuff. So even if the poet passed, at least they know that their work has gone on and they have become immortal. Yeah. You, you know, Kay, I I, I um, uh, listening to you and then hearing about the amount you had before, the amount of people you had before, and then now blossoming into so many other people. And then, you're, you know, it's not only limited to Belize City, mm -hmm. but around the country. What have you found? What have you guys found uh, is that not, not really a guiding light, but the reason why people really uh, actually get attracted to it? And what have you found that have opened the mind of these people? The thing that opened the mind of the people is that the, the honesty, because 501, you have different voices, everyone expressing their own truth. So it's like the society that we want to create in Belize where you have people from different perspective, different worldviews, and existing under one room where the mutual ground is respect and, and poetry, the love for poetry, and being able to disagree, but respectfully. And that's the society that we would like to create mm -hmm. um, down in the future. So like when you have um, 501, everyone is just all love. Mm -hmm. Everyone, like, if we're not seeing in a long time, then everyone greets you, everyone is friendly with you. And it really, you have that sense of family. If you, even if you never experience it, you can experience it at 501. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, yeah, really, Spoken Word 501 has really developed into a family. And poets share, we share our voices, share our ideas, encourage each other, mm -hmm. um, share how we see each other's work, and just give that space of listening to each other, a listening ear, mm. to know that your voice goes somewhere, and just to have people who are engaged in the same craft mm -hmm. and discipline really gives a space of light and encouragement. And Belize has a rich tradition of poetry, mm -hmm. poets. I have looked at the, the, the whole spectrum of it, and I, I know at least 100 poets in Belize who have published and, and shared their work over generations wow. from, the, from the 1920s. And, and even the, the, the ancient Maya had their rich codices where they wrote poetry and the whole spectrum of life and their whole way of being. Mm -hmm. So poetry has a deep and long and I think an infinite trajectory into the future because it's a living form. Yeah. It's a form that people can feel connected to life and feel connected to what drives life, the love within and the light that lives within each of us. You know, you spoke of being a family, and what I like, and, and we have Grandmaster here, you, you have Uncle. from well-known veterans mm -hmm. to people who are just entering into this expressive yeah. art. Mm -hmm. um, what's it like in, in terms of mentorship and sharing that relationship? So when you work with the, the new artists coming in, what do you advise them? How do you help them shape their craft? Well, um, <coughs> you know, Pepito Shell, they always quote to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, they find it difficult to write a poem. I tell them, you know, the first thing you have to do is to remember you want to write the poem. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that you start with the first line mm -hmm. and the rest will come to you like that. You know, they, they ask me about how, I mean, how they remember, how I remember all my poems. I said, like, deep within each, you know, there's something intense and pure 
So whatever I put up here, no white two K virus, no minor, minor altering juggy race. <laughs> and they, they take that just like on the lap, they take that, and the next day I see there, and the following week I see there, and say, boy, you know, that me true. And they make I feel good, you know? And I try to reach out to any one of them, any one of them, and I could, it's a whole lot of them out there that come to me. I the pass from the street, they stop me, they haul all the papers. <laughs> And I encourage them the best, the best way I could. Yeah. Give them the best advice. Yeah. Give them how I make my least step up. Mm-hmm. And give them what sense of purpose mm-hmm. that you yeah, express yourself. Because poetry, like they say, it's, it's an expression. And for me, some people like ask me what they're not here for. Me, I stop right. I still on the year, but only listen. Mm-hmm. And if I ever stop right for me, poetry and writing, and they're like bread for me. Mm-hmm. Really? So if I stop right. I stop breathing. Mm. So I'm not done right now until. So what do you do with all the work that you create? Um, I share it the best way I could. Okay. You know, um, sometimes they are in high school, from ABC to primary school to UB. Anybody ask me, boy, like I leave family gathering if I could go and do something for them. Yeah. I rate this up. Mm-hmm. If I change my path and not from the curb, yeah. I rate this up. Mm-hmm. You know, and and people people look for me and say, but you don't get tired of how you get tired of something where you love? Mm-hmm. How you get tired of something where create you? Mm-hmm. How you get tired of something that make you feel like, yeah, that they do something for real? Yeah. yeah. You know? And I always say it, and I left them with this start that they start from the heart. Yeah. If not, you're far apart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, question though, uh, you know, what do you, what, what, what happens to the soul when you finish writing something and you belt that out? What happens to you then? So it's like stepping out like you have all your problems where you come with from home and you step up onto a stage of strangers we might need care about what you got for sale and then you just go and let that out so that in its own form is very therapeutical for an artist or for anyone to just come out or right, you have a bad time at work so this is like a happy hour without you having to get drunk or anything or have to worry about the hangover or go home afterwards so you could just go out there and express yourself so many a times we have people and uh, we see that it's a, a rise in depression and this is some way we could use to counteract depression so spoken word has become a form of therapy that we can do and get that out there so we could just be free with ourselves yeah. and be free with our thoughts and be comfortable with ourselves because many a times people are afraid to say their truth because they're afraid of people judging them mm-hmm. and in this space everyone can express themselves yeah. the only grounds would be respect what, what's, what's the challenge in the process for you individually is it starting sometimes it's finishing <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's performing um, or even sharing it with others. What, what, where do you find perhaps where, where you have your own challenges? Because this is an entire creative process. Yes, it's a, it's a whole process. And for me, it's listening. Hmm. For me, it's a process of listening, of listening to the spirit within and listening to God's voice within us yeah. and listening to the soul. And it's, for me, writing is a launch into the unknown and writing what I hear within, and writing my truth, the, the visions that I see in my mind, and that, that I hear the words that I hear. I experience words as music. I think words are God's light within us, the, the light that we use to create new worlds and new ways of being. And it's as if you're creating a, a putting together a puzzle but from pieces that you experience directly and you don't know where it's going to end, but when you reach that destination, it's a process of discovery and creation. It's creating what you discover and discovering what you create. And when you complete it, you have that sense of completion and that you've brought something new to the world and that you can share, yeah. as Grandmaster says. And and as he always generously does, shares his voice, is a process of sharing. And I think poetry is a, a uniting force of love that, that gives life and illuminates yeah. the life we live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now, well, for me, um, that, that, that whole process of, of writing or entertaining, for me, when I front of the audience, I say, we're invisible. 
Uh -huh. I know you hear it in. I feel the vibe. Mm -hmm. And I could tell I could tell myself, well, this is where I could do front and people and this is where I could say and this is where I know to say. But at the end of the day when I finish with them, who may come come watch me or perform backs, gone who's happy. Mm -hmm. They left who happy, you know. And it, there was a process where well for me I write in my sleep. Like two, three o'clock I write something in my hair and I jump right up and put, and it, put it down the stuff. That's the best time I write. Yeah. Wow. You know? <laughs> two, three o'clock in the morning. And it just flow. But like I, like they said I found like A to B to C and I jump on here and I got a wheel of G. Mm -hmm. You know? There's no shortcut into writing, there's no long drag. There's just writing. Pure writing and that's the way I do. And that's the only thing I know I find because all the while, through my entertainment and through my career, I try to find this piece of thing we're supposed to um, come out in and, me and become poet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it became, it, this became it, and sometimes I get really emotional. And I'm like, wow. You know, after I know I finish and I have an audience captivated, and when I finish and I put down the mic, I have to go to the bathroom, I rest out in front and I cry. Mm. It make you feel good. Really make you feel good, you know. And, <laughs> I'm, I'm blessed um, and I thank everybody who um, support me and, and 501 during this long process. Because mm -hmm. our rough process took us, you know, you got some people out there who try to hold it back. Mm -hmm. And nothing can hold it back, just let it flow. 501 kind of way, you know what I mean? As, as Margaret <laughs> says, every show it releases as it, as it flows. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. the matter for the suffering, suffering now. Uh, the experience in itself because that the way sometimes bring out some of your most purest piece because then you say everything and it's raw and just pure and it, when you exchange that energy with the crowd you just say the difference because people could resonate with your message now yeah. so sometimes they might not even understand what you just said but just based on your facial expression poetry in itself become like the music and the lyrics right there like you don't know, understand when it is and you're just captivated by just the way how they deliver it just the way how each grio or wordsmith just put their words out to you and you just like and you might need know the poet but then you you could be able for identify with their struggle because that 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 will really bring out some of your best piece the when you go to the brink where you think not nulle and you want to give up and then not know where the poem come to you how, it's how an energy force yeah. go ahead like, but <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I was just saying it, yeah. it's, it's, like it's an energy force. Yeah. Uh, the energy goes in circles, yeah. and the circle goes up, and it's. No, uh, you know, and, and he said that, and I, and I could I could literally put myself in the moment as an audience member, yeah. not <laughs> someone. <laughs> <laughs> but there is such a vulnerability in in the the spoken word that most of you share. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, you get up there and it's social commentary. Sometimes it's real life. It's broken heart. It's frustration. It's. It's many different feelings all at once. I just wonder sometimes, what is it like to stand there? That is, that is the stereotypical fear that people have with public speaking, that you feel it's, it's not about the audience being naked, it's you being naked in front of the crowd, because you're just <laughs> bearing your soul. Yeah. And that, yeah. that has to be a challenge. And I guess that's where the emotional release you're talking about comes yeah. from. Yeah. 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 Def definitely, man, because you've got some real skeptic with the, you know, the audience sometimes. Right? Oh, that you, yes, that you are the talk to. No look behind you, that you are the talk to, me the talk to you, and you get their attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the negativity where they had about you, just come out. Just come out. Especially and after what you've said. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And then that just give me a therapeutic feeling too. Yeah. You know, if I have a hatred or, or a bad feeling about that person, and I done with her. I love you. I don't know that. I find it a sharing. Yeah. Yeah. sharing. For me, the difficult work, the hard work is the creation uh -huh. and reading to an audience or, or creating and sharing from a voice is a feeling of sharing, mm -hmm. of sharing what you have created and no one knows where the fire of a word or a spark can set fire to a blade. So you just mm -hmm. share the best you can, share with the full fire of your voice mm -hmm. and you don't know where a poem will travel you. you you publish a book or you share a poem with an audience, you don't know in what ways you can affect a person. And there is no control in the process, and it's a process of letting go, of, of letting it all go and just, just sharing what you have created. Yeah. What's been your most 
powerful moment as, as a poet uh, as when you were performing? Share, share that experience with us. I think my most powerful moment would be a tribute poem that I did for Grandmaster, an ode to Grandmaster, because many a times that, that's why I push hard in 501 because we have the best of two generations because we always have this talk about generation X, generation Y, and we're not able for bridging the communication gap. So spoken word has become that place where we bridge the gap per se and we have the older poets mentoring the younger poets and vice versa because we can both learn from each other. So penning that poem, I was listening to the album just like that and then the words started to flow. So but I didn't want to use his lyrics so I just went and bring about my own emotion. Even I started to tear up when we first performed it at the fourth anniversary. Yeah. And that in itself was a surreal moment because many a times we don't honor someone until they, until they pass. So I, I didn't want to. And what was it like it. looking at him and, and delivering? Like I said, it was order. emotion because then you, you're tasked with delivering the piece but at the same time you have to control your emotion mm -hmm. in front of an audience and that in itself have you have all of that pressure upon you but then that we all love because then everybody encouraged it. so not like people who are the heckle you people had encourage or clap and make sure that just go ahead Continue. deliver yeah. so you, it's okay to be to make mistakes they're not, they're not be like, oh, you, oh we, are, we start to heckle you. It's okay to make mistakes in front of the audience, and they're very supportive. And that's the, t that's the energy, I guess, most people are drawn to, that mm -hmm. you can be yourself and just express. I'd imagine it, what that's no, like yeah, on the other yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tell um, us know, about that. Man, um, the first time I, 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 I sit down there and I listen to K.O. do that poem, I like could have never sit right down this one. And when he finished, I couldn't give him say nothing. I couldn't say nothing to, due to the fact that, whoa, that I'm a mad, mad respect that man give me a night. Mad respect he still have for me, and a mad respect I have for him. And no poet I ever knew or heard about did something so, I would call it so perfect, my brother. Mm -hmm. So perfect. That you make that you make I look small, I don't smile. <laughs> make I feel, <laughs> make I feel small and be like, whoa, you know. And he, he, that was nice feeling, and that was nice feeling. For you listen for you to listen to a poet, you do a poem about you, yeah. where I should have me do. You know, so yeah. mad respect, me brother. That's fine. You know, I, I I wanted to ask uh, th that same question, but I I, I wanted to say uh, first place that we didn't get to ask Andy Palacio and Mr. Peters, what's the feeling like when somebody is actually honoring you? You mm -hmm. answered that question, Grandmaster. You see this? Mm -hmm. This is actually the fruits that you've sown, the trees that you've sown from all the way back when, and at this particular point. Whoa! I know you say how. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I could. That's I what I could home. see yeah, right now. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, about the fact that how you feel about an honor. How do you feel about the seeds that you've sown? Did you ever see that you you'd had so many poets in this country just because of uh, what you did for us back in the days of pressure? I think then you would be uh, how, how how old you were you when pressure came out? Not about. <laughs> Eight or nine. Did you ever feel that, you know, at that particular <laughs> time that you would have been a poet? Or were you a poet at that time? I wasn't a poet at that time, See? but I was always I always saw Grandmaster on Channel Seven when he did the, the poetry segment yeah. after after the at news. The so that's when news. everyone was yeah. seen in front of Majestic Ali. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think a lot of people grew up on that yeah. and then afterwards the poems just transcend because Grandmaster I mean just like the force, the voice were just the day and unique. Mm -hmm. You can't imitate his song. <laughs> I was experienced. Sometimes I try. Yeah. No, I, was experience, <laughs> I was experienced when you were a grandmaster young as a, a poetic force and a, a presence that's always there. And you were has a great ability to take on a journey from the origins of his writing to where he is now and to connect it with life yeah. and connect it with his journey. And he has a diamond, a memory like a diamond. He can take you to any moment 
of his life connected with Belizean life. So he's one of our great poets. Yeah. And even with his poem, you could also see that even though he performed some of the some of the poems that we knew or we grew up with, mm -hmm. it, it's not the same poem. Each time the poem changes because sometimes he adds a new lyric to it or he adds something to it. So it, it's never the same poem, and that's something that we learn over time that you have to do different things with different audiences yeah. because then you have to be able to reach. And, and that's the thing with his poems is his poems are timeless. It's able to reach my generation, even the lead generation would come up after we. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, Mali, about the most powerful poetic experience reading to an audience is reading for the first time my book then poem, Light Feast, mm -hmm. to the poets at Spoken Word 5.1, to that space, reading it for the first time in the air and I read it over the course of a year and just have being in that space of support mm -hmm. and poets willing to listen and share it was moving mm -hmm. o over that time. So tell us about the selection of the pieces for this book. You have what? 40 poems? 40 poems. 40, 40 poems, poems from 40 poets? No, 20, 20 poets, 40 poems. Okay. So what we, the process was that over the past five years, everyone had that poem that everyone likes. So they uh -huh. picked their favorite poem, and that the um, crowd favorite, and compile it together in this book. And then what we did was standardize the Creole because everyone had their own version of Creole. So we we were thinking, all right, how could we make like people from outside of Belize understand the poetry? So we decided to take the poems and standardize the Creole using the Creole dictionary. And from there, we just um, Make, make magic and and then this is what we had. We, and you we add the glossary to the we end. We add the so glossary to the end. To so understand. it was me, um, or it was me, Margaret and Hannah who put the glossary together, and we mm -hmm. did that in the last couple of weeks ago. And it was because we was we were coming to the anniversary and the pressure that upon we right now. So like, <laughs> even when we get the, when we get this call for do this interview right now, is that we did late the night last night just the other day, compile everything, get the pictures and yeah. videos and everything together. So I mean that's something we're used to, but we're like like we grandmaster say our passion and we love it. Yeah. And, and the poets are brilliant. I, I wanted to to name the poets because yes, I please. think they're important. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It's important to do so. It's Margaret Reynolds. Leroy Grandmaster Young, Ramon Joseph, Ion Cacho, Shante Pascasio, Jemuel Rabato, mm -hmm. Gia Martinez, Kiran Gabriel, Harley River Fireburn, mm -hmm. Enja, Dwayne Murillo, Jasid X Avila, Marika Zuniga, Keisha Rodriguez, Wilford X, Alton Humes, Chanel Joseph, Ellen Joseph, Shante Mack, and myself, Sean Tegar. Mm -hmm. mm. so it's really a <laughs> diverse mix of poets with unique voices, yeah. each with our own fire and, and sound. And it, it, the poems are brilliant, the, the, yeah. the, the poems as a whole. Yeah. It's, a, it's a journey into a, a, a new vision. Mm -hmm. So the book is already available online, but there will be a launch in Belize. Tell us about that. Yeah, it, go ahead. Oh, yeah. It's, we're going to launch a book next Friday, 29th of June at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. at Image Factory mm -hmm. on the occasion of the fifth anniversary celebration of Spoken Word 501. Yeah. So we invite everyone to come to the show, listen to the poet. The poets will be reading and performing their poetry and to purchase a book if you're able to or so move that it will be officially launched on that night. Yeah. And the book is already on sale on Amazon.com, wow. where you can yeah. purchase the book. The, the night of the show, they're going to, it's going to be a, uh, a, promotional. A, pro a promotional price of the book of $20. Yes. And after that, you can get the book from any of the poets at $25 a copy. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and this, th th the proceeds go to the poets to help them support their work and to the group of Spoken Word 501 to help sustain this work because Spoken Word 501 also travel to different locations in the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a, a, a we call it sp Spoken Un Word Unplugged. Unplugged, yes. So the first time that we did an Unplugged episode was in Kikak and we, it was like a, another surreal moment because we filled a, a bar. Uh, we had to perform with 
different people, different characters and what's not, and just go in, go in there. So, and then we also go to um, Dangriga where we helped out with Miss um, Marin, who has a poetry group down there. And th they do every every month, and we were down there last October for their second anniversary because they're one of the next group that's coming behind us with sustaining a. a, a a space for the writers at the Ignacio Cacho Library. So um, Miss Marin, they're doing their work with their poets, and we would hope to see that we could um, create different spaces in the other districts, because we want to see how we could elevate our people through poetry and heal people through poetry. And somewhere down the line, maybe we can actually start to see some competition, slam yeah. poetry and so forth. And so Kiran is like our poet laureate, because he really <laughs> brings up, sustains I, the space, helps yeah. sustain it, and push to go to different locations and yeah. encourage people. And the beauty of Spoken Word 501 is this openness yeah. that any, any poet can come and share. The format of the show, we have a lineup of poets and an open mic section of the show where anyone can come and read a poem and their poets are always welcome and those people who want to come and listen and experience poetry mm -hmm. first hand. And going through the basics as we were asking before the show started, poems don't have to rhyme. Yeah. It's no. just, it, it is your own write, writing process. Any advice to people who really wanted to, to jump into this um, but perhaps have hesitated? Hmm. Read everything. Reading is the most important part of writing. And a shared advice my father gave to me, Leroy Tega, write what you hear, write what you know, write what you want, write what you think, and write what you see, and listen to your heart and write what you hear. The words will flow. I love wow. that. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, well that's, uh, that's like basically everything because that's something that stayed with us. Like Sean has always been that one person behind us that's always encouraging us yeah. like even if we feel like putting down our pins sean is that person to like come just dust yourself off and yeah. continue yeah. right just continue the journey awesome. mm -hmm. well i don't know how best better that you could get it and <laughs> sean said you know but um for me um when you ask me about the seed and anything i mean our pleasure for um for having all these guys like i would say and i need my wing mm. You know what I'm saying? I know them guys have matured into such awesome people like Miss Reynolds and, and my brother Sean and this young man here. So they, they, they have blossomed and they have um, got so mature in it now yeah. because my thing that we just write and we recite, but now they're there behind the scene also. They yeah. produce, they publish these books after the upper night. Yeah. And yeah. you know, hard work with fun and this that they um, yeah. follow it, you know. I love the sense of camaraderie that I'm hearing yeah. from all of you here. Yeah. So I know that collectively you are all celebrating both the anniversary and the publication of yeah. this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my final question just has to do with uh, moving to another level. Um, I, we, we have been lucky enough to have you on the show and see the live performances. And I know we're moving into an age, and reading is important. I, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. But just people are used to visual <laughs> consumption even mm -hmm. more. I think. Uh, your pressure performance is iconic yeah. because of the ad where everybody yeah. remembers seeing it and hearing it and connecting at the same time. Yeah. And now we see, uh, you know, internet stars who are spoken word mm -hmm. um, poets. Jay Shetty, for example, is viral on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Do you ever envision a time where we will have a spoken word 501 putting out their own series of uh, Belizean poets poems where we can feel that connection with what you're saying as well with the right music the right production are, are we are we heading in that direction it's happening right now actually it's happening right now because um the ad the video that we have we we had a couple of our poets um reading to their their thing so the thing is just to, the level that we're working on right now is just getting them off the paper okay so once we're at that level then we'll push out the video because we don't want to push out anything that is wishy-washy we want the best content as possible so when we put out it whether it be male female or whatever um part of the spectrum we push out our best material put our best foot forward mm -hmm. so it's happening right now and you'll see you'll see you you'll see how everything unfolds because i have another project that i'm working on and i'm hoping 501 could help me and other poets because I want to highlight the poetry of the 19th, of the 20th century yeah. and giving context to that with 
using the writers of now. Right. Well, you've got uh, secrets going on. You've got mm, things coming up. Yeah. So <laughs> to the writers of the world. That's the book. Uh, it has 40 Belizean poems made by Beli 20 Belizean yeah. poets. Yeah. And the book is available on Amazon. Search for it, purchase it, or go to the launch at the Image Factory next week, Friday, June 29th. June 29th. What time? 7, 7, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 7 PM. And you can get to see them perform it as well and get the book at a discounted price. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we're closing off with another uh, poem. Yeah. Sean, it's your turn up to the mic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you want to take that? Yeah, just take that off and then you walk over with the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to say thank you for coming in. Thank you for sharing your work with us here on the show and thank you for sharing your work to the mm -hmm. Belizean audience through this publication. Congratulations on your hard work. Thank you. All right. Your turn, Sean. And so Sean will be doing for us, what's the name of the poem? To the Writers of the World. Go for it. To the writers of the world, write with strength, share with love. Launch your dreams in a fire of freedom. Everything will work out all right. Listen to the spirit. All my love, love Shantega. Writers of the world, write what you hear, write what you feel, write what you know, write what you want. Write what you think, write what you see. Listen to the silence of your heart and write what you hear. The words will flow like water. Your words are your bread, God's divine light of the wind, the fire of God within. Listen to the spirit. Listen to the spirit in the silence of your heart. Your God is speaking to you there. Listen to all voices. The spirit is harmonizing them into a song. Your words are your bread. Your words are the divine fire of God within. Within is infinity, the spirit of God, he and she whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere, the God of humankind. The spirit lives in all of us and we are all a part of the spirit. Your words are the light of the wind, the divine fire of God within, the songs of seeing, the songs of light, the songs of freedom's fire, the songs of God's divine love. Read, 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 read everything. Reading is the most important part of writing. Read to develop the imagination with which you create new worlds. Read to create the universes within. Write always the visions of your heart. They will bear the rich fruit of fire, the universes of the future. The universes are within. Your voices are visions. Your voices are the freedom of fire. Your voices are God's divine fire singing the future to light. Your voices are diamonds of song launched from the universe's cosmic womb of the abyss of nothing, the source of all life, the light comes from the dark. Your voices are God singing to God. Write with strength. Share with love. Launch your dream in the fire of freedom, the fire of God within with which we create new worlds. Love is the answer. Love is the key. Love is the weapon that is conquering the world for God. Love is the divine light of God that is uniting humanity and harmonizing the memory of dream to the light of God's tongue of diamond sons. Sing the truth of your heart. Sing your dream in God's fire of joy. The world is listening. Your God is listening. The spirit of God that lives in every human being is listening to your song, unfolding its infinity of sound, its son of births. Your birth is divine. You are the fullness of God, birthed from God the Mother, the cosmic womb of creation, the abyss from which all light comes, the source of all life. Death sleeps in your dream. Death 
is ash. There is no death. Just a transition to a different level of consciousness. Fear is just singing to fire. Fear is ash. The heart of the spirit is singing the future to the fire of joy in the unity of God's heart of love. Fire is your freedom dancing in the wind. The future's womb of sky. God's wisdom sings from your mouth, from the dawn of your throat, from the sun of your song. The spirit is the wind, the womb of fire. The energy goes in circles and the circle goes up. The light within the light. Listen, listen, listen. Listening is the key to seeing. Listen to all voices. The spirit is harmonizing them into a song, into a diamond of fire with which you navigate the future, into a compass of stars, into kaleidoscopes of knowledge, into the future of bright beginnings, into the sound of God's voice, singing the future to flesh, to the fire of forever freedom, into love spirit of spirits, spiriting the spirit, 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 spirit. Everything will work out all right. Listen to the Spirit. Navigate by your God's voice. Share God's love. Share God's love with all you meet. Love is the answer. Love is the key. Love is the weapon that is conquering the world for God. Love is God's divine light uniting the universes in the harmony of God's heart. Love. 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 Spirit the spirit, 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 spirit. I have spoken. The spirit of God has spoken. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you with all my heart, all my love. Love, Shantega. <laughs>